Hi, I'm Snigdha Sharma and you're listening to 3 Things, the Indian Express news show. In this episode of 3 Things, we discuss the vaccine shortage in Maharashtra, the plight of Bengal's famous jute industry and the return of CRPF jawan Rakeshwar Singh Manhas from Maoist custody in Chhattisgarh. Beginning with Maharashtra. The efforts of the centre and the states to coordinate in the fight against the second and clearly bigger wave of the pandemic in India are seeing cracks appear. The most recent case was the tussle between the Maharashtra government and the centre. Maharashtra, which is seeing a massive surge, reporting over 50,000 cases daily, has raised an alarm over shortage of vaccines. It has asked for a minimum of 40 lakh doses. The centre, while it has increased the vaccine supply and decided to send 17 lakh doses to the state, has also accused the second wave surge states of politicising a public health issue and spreading lies. And also of not doing enough in terms of testing, contact tracing and ramping up the health infrastructure. To find out what is going on in Maharashtra, we spoke to Tabasum Barnagarwala, who reports for the Indian Express from the state. So, Tabasum, if you can start by telling us what is the current situation in Maharashtra in terms of vaccine supply and how is it being dealt with? See, so basically when Maharashtra started off, they were vaccinating around 20 to 50,000 people and slowly they scaled it up. Because COVID-19 cases were also surging, there was a dedicated effort to increase the daily numbers of vaccination to 3 lakh per day. Currently, Maharashtra is vaccinating anywhere between 3.5 lakh to 4 lakh per day. And based on the daily requirement, the Maharashtra Health Minister Rajesh Tope had requested the Union Health Ministry to send at least 20 to 21 lakh doses per week so that they are able to satisfy the the rise in vaccination numbers that Maharashtra has seen. There was also a rationale behind asking for more doses that Maharashtra is seeing uh, it's a really bad second peak and it is one of the worst hit state in the entire country. So they need to speed up vaccination to create a concept of herd immunity. Now, the problem has started occurring in the last one week where a lot of districts were falling short of stock. They have been repeatedly asking the centre to send more stock. There's an overall shortage in um, the supply of vaccines and the centre is being very specific with the number of doses they are giving out to each state. So, Maharashtra as of now has stock which will last them for two days at the most. Today, several districts like Sangli, Panvel Municipal Corporation, Satara had to shut their vaccination because there were absolutely no vials left. In Mumbai, the Municipal Commissioner confirmed to us that multiple centres have been shut because there is no stock. So the whole issue over here is that Maharashtra is saying we are ready to vaccinate 6 lakh people a day, just give us enough doses. And the centre is saying that Maharashtra already has enough doses and it has not performed really well in terms of its vaccination numbers. So they should first exhaust what they have and then we'll give them more. So that has been um, the tug of war which is happening between the centre and the state since yesterday. Okay, so since when did the state government begin flagging this issue of vaccine shortage? So the health officials are telling us that since the last 10 days they have been communicating every day with the centre that uh, they are low on uh, stocks and they need more vials as soon as possible. Several districts have been communicating this to the state government that they need more vials. So this process has been on for the last 10 days where there have been official and unofficial communications between state and centre. Simultaneously, the health minister over here in Maharashtra has been talking to the union health minister Harsh Vardhan about shortage and about the fact that they need more stock. In fact, even um, NCP leader Sharad Pawar had a word with the union health ministry and he also requested for more stock. So this has been going on for the last few days. The reason why the government decided to sort of bring it to media's attention and explain it to them that, you know, there's an acute shortage because as of yesterday, we had just 15.76 lakh doses left in Maharashtra at night, which would be sufficient for the next three days. That is when this whole issue was brought to the fore and uh, the trip started discussing how they are forced to turn away people because they don't have enough vaccine stock. Right. So, that was one of the issues that the vaccine shortage in Maharashtra has brought to attention is the tussle between the centre and states with opposition governments when it comes to dealing with pandemic-related issues. So, if you can tell us more about what is going on on that front in Maharashtra. On Wednesday, when the Maharashtra government raised this issue of shortage of vaccines, by evening, Union Health Minister Harsh Vardhan issued a long statement in which he's basically pulled up three states, Maharashtra, Delhi and Punjab, for 
poor performance in vaccination. Uh, Mr. Vardhan said that Maharashtra has vaccinated only 86% of health workers with first dose and 41% of um, health workers with the second dose. And he went on to say that Maharashtra has vaccinated only 73% of frontline workers as compared to five other states which have crossed 85%. Even in terms of senior citizens, he said that Maharashtra has crossed 25%, Delhi has crossed 30%, Punjab has crossed 13%. While there are four other states which have crossed 50% of vaccination of senior citizens. So these were some points that the Union Health Minister raised. He said that Maharashtra is constantly shifting its goalpost. Its uh, performance in vaccination has been poor. So Harshwadham said that we have always communicated with the states that there is a paucity of vaccines and um, its use will be judicious. So it is not possible for us to also vaccinate youngsters, which has been a constant demand of Maharashtra. Even today, the chief minister is going to discuss this in the meeting with prime minister that they need to vaccinate people aged more than 20 years because this is a pool which is roaming about, which is also bringing the infection home and infecting senior citizens. So that is a constant demand which Maharashtra has and there are other states also which have joined in. And uh, there's going to be a discussion on that with the center. But uh, Harshwadhan has been very clear that we want to first focus on our higher priority group where we are noticing higher deaths than other age groups. So they've been very clear that then at this point they're not going to start vaccinating younger populations. Based on whatever the Union Health Minister said yesterday, the Maharashtra Health Minister Rajesh Rupe today said that Maharashtra's health workers have been working consistently tackling both COVID-19 treatment and vaccination, which has been a very tiring job. So he said that, you know, we're going to reach a point where we will run out of our health infrastructure to treat COVID patients and vaccination is the only solution that we can see apart from testing, tracing and treatment to sort of control COVID-19 spread. So that is why they have been consistent with three, four demands. One, Maharashtra wants 40 lakh doses per week. Second, they want to vaccinate people aged between 20 to 40 years. And third, they have said that the stock should not be delayed and it should be steady in its supply because once the supply reduces, Maharashtra has to uh, reduce the daily number of vaccinations. Okay. So apart from the health minister accusing the state government of politicizing the issue, how has the centre responded to the shortage? After the, the heated exchange which happened between Maharashtra and the union government, today the health ministry has decided to increase the stock that it is going to send Maharashtra. So earlier they were going to send 7.43 lakh doses by April 15th. Now they have decided to send 17.43 lakhs. So there's an increase by 10 lakhs that Maharashtra will receive. But the problem here is that a lot of health officials, including the health minister, Mr. Rajesh Chope, had said that states like Gujarat, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, which are vaccinating less number of people, are still getting more vaccines than Maharashtra, which is not fair. So they have basically raised the concern of discrimination that uh, non-BGP states are facing. Okay, so Tabasum, since this issue of discrimination is being raised in terms of vaccine dosage supply, if you can compare vaccine supply in different states. So the data that we have from uh, the Ministry of Health shows that Gujarat has got about 1 crore doses till now, although its population is half of Maharashtra, while Maharashtra has got 1.07 crore doses. So it's basically saying that there's a disparity when you see the population, when you see the daily number of vaccination. Maharashtra's daily vaccination count is also much higher than Gujarat. And it is right now at the top in India in terms of the total number of vaccinations given per day. To also bring into perspective how the vaccine supply has been, there are 350 lakh doses available uh, which the Union Health Ministry is distributing to different states, of which Madhya Pradesh is going to get 33.76 lakh. Haryana is going to get 24 lakh, Karnataka is going to get around 30 lakh, Uttar Pradesh is going to get around 44.98 lakh, West Bengal is going to get 21 lakh, but Maharashtra is getting 17.43 lakh. So the basic contention is that if the vaccination numbers in Maharashtra are the highest in India and the COVID situation is the worst as of now, Maharashtra should be on priority in terms of vaccination, which they have repeatedly said that it is that is not the case. And uh, finally, Tabasum, if you can tell us why are we seeing this shortage of vaccines and what were the issues that contributed to it? So, um, when we were talking to the officials here, they said that in, until March, and India had um, sent 6 crore doses to around 76 nations across the globe as a support that India wanted to show in vaccine distribution. 
At that point, India had vaccinated 4.5 crore people. In the next fortnight or 16, 17 days, India has reached more than 8.5 crore vaccination. So the pace has suddenly increased, and that is not something which uh, I believe the health ministry anticipated that the number of people coming for vaccination every day will increase multifold. That has been a major reason because they've run out of stock faster than they imagined. I've been told by the ministry officials here in Maharashtra that the next stocking is expected by 15th of April. So until then, if Maharashtra will exhaust its supply in the next two days, it will have to stop vaccination for four to five days because there's going to be no stock unless the government diverts stock from some other state or provides an early delivery to Maharashtra. Coming to West Bengal, did you know that India is the largest producer of jute in the world, and West Bengal is the largest producer of jute in India? Sprinkled along the banks of the Hooghly River, the mills are located in districts like 24 North Parganas and Hooghly. Jute mills were, in fact, the foundation on which industrialization began in Bengal in the 19th century. More than 150 years later, today, the industry struggles with issues that range from lack of finances to labor unrest. The pandemic only added to its woes, and because of all these problems, mills have no option but to shut down and reopen time and again. With the assembly elections ongoing in the state and the lacks of workers who are a part of this industry, the jute mills of Bengal have caught the interest of political parties yet again. To find out what is going on, Indian Express's Dipankar Ghosh visited the Gondal Para Jute Mill in Chandanagar. We spoke to him about why jute mill workers are important for political parties right now, how these parties are trying to woo the workers in their favor, and most importantly, the issues that the jute mills of Bengal and their workers are grappling with. Dipankar, if you can begin by telling us about the importance of Bengal's jute mill workers in light of the ongoing assembly elections. So the jute mill workers are important in West Bengal, particularly in the districts of Hooghly, Howrah, and North Twenty Four Paraganas, where a lot of the jute mills are. Now, uh, why this is important is the first is that jute has always been closely associated with West Bengal, and the industry employs many lakh, several lakhs of workers. Secondly, that these jute mills have, over the last, let us say, decade, or even before that, two decades, have kind of devolved into erratic businesses which shut down. Uh, there have been uh, labor strikes before that have turned violent. There are issues of machinery, of equipment, of efficiency, of optimization, which means that these jute mills open for a while and then shut again. And when they open again, sometimes they're not at their maximum. Capacity, so workers then are losing their jobs. Now, what the jute mills also have done over the last so many years is that they have brought in a lot of workers from outside Bengal who call themselves Hindustanis as opposed to Bengali natives, and they've been here for many years now. And around them, a, a local economy has also developed. Their family members have come and now do other jobs. So this is a solid bank of votes that basically for whom. The nature of industry, the nature of the jute mills, what is going to happen, the future of those—that is what takes preeminence, because that is what will affect them over the next five years, is particularly with these lockdowns coming and going, and industry being affected. Which is why there are solid vote bank. There are people. Forget the word vote bank for a second, though. There are people whose lives are affected by the future of the jute mills and the future of larger industry which is a larger thematic in the bengal elections because there are pockets where jobs are being talked about and industry is being talked about mamta banerjee's association with singur and nandigram and the idea of whether she is pro industry or anti industry and whether the bjp is pro industry or anti industry all of these make the jute mill workers a fascinating representation of particularly the industrial belt in bengal right so the punker now that we know of their importance how are both the political parties in west bengal that is the trinamool congress and the bjp trying to woo the jute mill workers through their campaigns in the region uh right so there have been two levels of campaigns one is around the jute mills themselves so for instance the importance of the jute mill worker can be seen through let us say on february 25th bjp national president jp nadda along with kailash vijayvargiya 
who heads the BJP campaign in West Bengal, and the state president, uh, Dilip Ghosh. They went to a jute mill worker's house to have lunch, symbolically. So that tells you how important that is. Then, for instance, over time, when mills shut and when mills open again, for instance, the Gondalpara mill, which we, which we wrote about in our story, that opened after two years in October 2020. So when it did open, every party kind of rushed to take credit. So... You'll find videos from the Hooghly MP Lockett Chatterjee talking about how the BJP, how how it was a great day and how the BJP has helped on the ground. That message was spread. The TMC says it is Mamta that has stood for the workers and, you know, assisted in putting pressure on these private mill owners to open up again. So everybody rushes to take credit. So that is one level. When you're actively in the campaign, Of course, people are coming around to campaign and talk about these things and who stands with whom. But, you know, when we were roaming around, we also saw these campaign vehicles of different uh, parties. So in Gondalpara, just outside, you saw the TMC van, which was normally saying the same thing. It was a van that was doing the rounds and, you know, the Khala Habe and Mamta Dee's Bangla Nije Mike Chai, which is uh, Bengal wants its own daughter. Those were the normal thematics that was in that van. What was interesting was the BJP van. Because the BJP van was speaking, exclu- the loudspeaker was speaking exclusively in Hindi. And there were chants of Jai Shri Ram and Ram Lalla Ayenge. And while Jai Shri Ram is a normal motto of the BJP that they've used as almost a war cry against the TMC in Bengal, it was very specifically in Hindi. So they're also trying to get the Hindi-speaking population of these jute mill workers in and around them, appealing to that. Because as you know, in UP and Bihar, the BJP does have preeminence. They are both in government and there is this sense that, so there is that other level of people being reached out to. My finding in Gondalpara specifically as well was that the emergent issues of salaries and and who will stand for the jute mill workers, that was taking significance over any of these other other issues that, that existed. Dipankar, for this particular ground report that you did, you visited the Gondalpara jute mill that only reopened end of last year after two long years. So if you can highlight the issues that plagued the jute mills of Bengal using Gondalpara as an example. As the workers kind of suggest that there was a change in ownership in the last decade, that I think they said, I think they mentioned between 2007 and 2009. Since then, the mill has been beset by a lot of problems, such as The owner uh, saying that there isn't enough money to operate at full scale. The machinery has become old and is too unaffordable now to replace. Things like that. You know, they're just simply symptomatic of not enough money being in the industry. And uh, therefore, issues of unpaid provident fund, gratuity of workers, not only unpaid salaries, but salaries that aren't rising commensurate with the times. So cost reductions. So the labor then kind of argues that we are working at the same prices we did before. So all of those issues have made jute a very erratic industry. You know, there are industries that have shut down and opened again. Gondalpara was shut for a full two years. The workers, there are 11 worker unions. All of them, I mean, a lot of them went to the district labor court. They appealed to uh, political parties. My sense was that they said that at the time when they were all shut. While Mamta Banerjee might have tried to do something, the local TMC leaders or the local BJP leaders didn't come and you know stand with them. Aha. Uh-huh. So, Dipankar, based on the conversation that you had with the workers that you met, uh, tell us what they think of the BJP and the TMC. I think what is interesting is what these guys were talking about in terms of politics and bringing it back to the elections, is that there are Both for the BJP and the TMC, in their minds, in the workers' minds, there are two very clear pros and cons. I think Mamta Banerjee has kind of inculcated a sense that she is, given that Shingur and Nandigram were so powerful, they were as movements. They were movements that said that land was being grabbed by industry unfairly. But what that has resulted in is an idea that she is not very pro-industry. So there is... One notion of Mamta Banerjee not being very pro-industry as against the BJP that people see as very pro-industry, that they will bring industry and therefore in Bengal at least, they will bring jobs, etc. Perhaps also because they're a new party and they don't carry baggage, so they're a new option, why don't we try them? However, there is the other side where these workers, 
look uh, jute mill as an industry is comprised of the senior management and the workers right now the workers are a huge percentage in terms of just in terms of absolute numbers now the workers suggest there is this fear among the workers that while mamta has always stood with the unions she stands with the poor man she stands with workers and with farmers who are being attacked or harassed or discriminated against there is this sense that while bjp might be good for larger industry maybe they will side with the owners as opposed to the workers maybe it is more about larger economics than workers rights for them so i think that dichotomy is playing out in hugli and in gundalpara and outside the angus mill in chandani and things like that whether what that will mean in the larger context of the elections we will find out on may 2nd and now coming to chatisgarh Maoists in Chhattisgarh on Thursday released Cobra Jawan Rakeshwar Singh Manhas. This was after keeping him in custody for five days following the ambush in Bijapur that left 22 Jawans dead. A group of local journalists and community leaders went to bring Manhas. He was brought to Basagura Police Station and then taken for a medical checkup. Three days after the attack on 6th of April, the Maoists had said that the Jawan was in their custody and had asked the state government to name interlocutors for his release. A day later, the banned CPIM or the Communist Party of India Maoists released a picture of Manhas in which he could be seen sitting on a plastic mat under a temporary shelter, possibly at a Maoist camp. Manhas, a constable in the Elite Commando Battalion for Resolute Action or Cobra Unit of the CRPF, is a resident of Jammu. On Sunday after he was declared missing a senior CRPF officer had met his family in Jammu and assured his relatives that the government was fully behind them and trying its best to get him back In the press note of 6th of April the Maoist organization released the names of four Maoists who had died in the operation It also claimed that the Maoists had managed to procure 14 weapons more than 2000 bullets and other items You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was written and produced by me, Snigdha Sharma, and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. You can follow us and leave us feedback on Facebook or Twitter at Express Podcasts, or send us an email at podcasts at indianexpress dot com. And if you like this show, please do subscribe and leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts from, so more people can find us. You can also look for us in the audio section in the top right corner of our website, indianexpress dot com. 